that word give it life. It gives it understanding unto the same thing. Only the word of God can change your world. As you listen to this podcast by Christian Information Network Ministry, your world shall shout. You can see the stories of how the apostles and other disciples gathered to be following Jesus. He called them, you know, later the Bible says he called, he appointed, after he called the disciples, then he appointed those we now refer to as the apostles. Amen. Now you see, one of them was a publican. Now you see, a publican in the land of Israel they were regarded as worse of sinners. I hope somebody was interpreting for uh, the Yoruba people there. Praise God. A publican was regarded as a sinner. And Jesus Christ saw Matthew sitting at the seat of the custom and he said, follow me. Hallelujah. Now you see, I'm sure one of the well-paid jobs today in civil service is the custom. Either legit money or illegit money. Praise God. Custom people get money coming to their hands. Am I right? You don't know. And if you don't know, they will bust people's shop, they will cut, cut rice away. You never hear anything about that rice again. That food they took away. They said uh, um, they pick people at the, at the, at the border uh, they, for smuggle and this and how many of these things? Go to the house of custom officers. I'm sure the best of the imported thing they say we should not bring to the country, Abby. you see it in their houses. <laughs> you understand that? Now that was the kind of person Matthew was. But because Jesus Christ said he did not come to the call to the righteous, but to sinner to repentance. But one beautiful thing is that whenever he asked these people to follow him, what he was asking for is total departure from their past life. Total departure from what? Their past life. Their readiness to accept Jesus as now their master. To learn from Jesus and to listen to Jesus. You understand that? If you understand where I started, the meaning of what? A disciple. A disciple, I mean, is to listen to the rabbi. The rabbi is the teacher. You want to follow the teacher. You want to learn from the teacher. You want to listen to the teacher. So, when he said they should follow him, they understood what Jesus Christ was saying. You must part away from your old life. You must embrace the new teachings of the rabbi, of the master. So, that was why these people... When he said they should follow him, they followed Jesus. In other words, there was a departure from the old life and Jesus went to his house and of course when he got to the house, he made a feast, you know, to celebrate his new found master, his new found life. And uh, Jesus was there to eat with other disciples and the, and the Pharisees said, ah, this man is a sinner because he's eating and drinking with the Pharisees. I mean, with the with the with the, with the uh, physicians. Hallelujah. With the sorry, with the publicans, eating and drink with the public. He must be a sinner. And Jesus Christ heard them. He said, "Look, they that are whole, they don't need doctor. But those that are sick, I have come not to call the righteous." but sinners to repentance. So the first good news I have for you as we start this discipleship retreat is that if you are here to give your life to Jesus, Jesus said, I am calling you to become my disciple. I am inviting you. Leave every other thing. Follow me. And when you follow me, you must listen to me. When you follow me, learn from me. Praise God. So that you will be called a true disciple. Amen. Now, when you look at uh, the scriptures, there are cause of being a disciple. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Mark 8, verse 34. 
there is a price tag to be a disciple. And when he had called the people unto him, with the disciple also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him do what? Deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Verse 37 says, Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The last verse 38 there says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and civil generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Now, he's telling you that to be a disciple of Jesus, there must be a readiness of the heart to follow him and to follow him all through. You must deny yourself. You must carry your cross. You must follow me. Praise the Lord. Look around. Anybody that is sleeping, wake that person up. You want to follow me? Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. That is what it means to be a disciple. Now, number one, what are the costs? Number one, to deny self. That is to put the needs of others before your own needs. That is what it means to deny yourself. You consider others ahead of yours. Number two, to take up the cross. That is, be prepared to accept suffering and death for your faith. If you are a child of God, if a disciple, taking up your cross means you have decided that whatsoever I meet in this journey, so be it. That you have made up your mind to follow him. Number three, to follow Jesus. Number three, as the cost is to follow Jesus, that is accepting Jesus as Lord and accepting his lifestyle. Follow me. That is, you are following him, you are accepting his lifestyle. You are accepting Jesus and his lifestyle. Everything that Jesus represents, that is what he wants us to be. Amen. Number four, it is to live a disciplined life. To be a disciple is to what? To live what? A disciplined life. Ready to sacrifice anything that will cause them distraction in following Jesus. Say, so if you don't deny yourself, at the place he said, you deny your father, you deny your mother, and you follow me, and you deny yourself. So, it is a disciplined life for anybody who is called to be a disciple of Jesus. Number five, leading by example in your community. To live as a good citizen in your community. That is one of the hallmark of being a disciple of Jesus, having Jesus, living, having the lifestyle of Jesus. In Mark chapter 12, verse 13 to 17, we are not going to read that. Mark chapter 12, verse 13 to 17. Now, you know, that was where they were asking Jesus, they brought a coin and said, is it good for us to pay a uh, tribute to Caesar? And of course, they were trying to put Jesus into trouble. Because if you say that, don't pay money to, uh, uh, to Caesar, then he becomes a secessionist. He becomes somebody that is against the Roman government. And of course, the Roman government will be able to arrest him. Now, and if you say that, pay to Caesar, they say, you see, you say you are a Jew and you are supporting the Roman government. Praise God. And But Jesus Christ said, let me have a coin. And they gave him a coin. And he said, look at it. Whose symbol, whose superscription is on this coin? They said it is Caesar. He said, then give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But give God what belongs to God. Amen. Now you can see that he led by example. They said, you come and pay tax. He went and make sure that he, by miracle, he got the money and he paid for himself and for Peter. So a disciple of Jesus is to follow the lifestyle of Jesus. You are to live by example in your community, in your environment, in your place of work. Don't let it be said that, ah, 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 he's a Christian, but he comes late to work. 
If you give him job, he's not going to do it very well. That should not be your story. Amen. Because to be a disciple is to listen to him, is to learn from him, and to live, to live the lifestyle of Jesus. The last point I'm going to uh, uh, bring out of that is to number six. The proper and true giving to give to be a giver in a proper and rightful way. Because we sing all that God has given to me, they belong to God. Abi? I remember in the Anglican in those days, Now it is very easy to sing. But in the actual practice, many people don't do it. It is, Lord Jesus, touch my heart, but don't touch my pocket. But on the other hand, you know, there is a way to give. And that is the concept you see in Mark chapter 12, verse 41 to 44. Mark 12, 41 to 44, we're not reading it. But Jesus was in the temple. And people were casting money into the treasury. Rich people came, they were putting money. They were putting money. But there was a widow who came and asked to mint, two mites, praise the Lord, and of course, the last of the coins. And the widow dropped the coin in the offering box. And Jesus now called the attention of his disciples. Say, Can you see? That widow gave more than the rest of them. He said, because the rest people, out of the abundance, they are giving. But this widow, the last in his hand, in her hand, is what he has given. Now, you see, the concept of giving as a disciple of Jesus Christ is to give in honor of the person that you are following. Praise God. Some people, they have turned the widow's mind to something else. Ah, let me give you my widow's mind. If, I'm doing, if you want to give me money, you say you want to give me widow's might, I will look at your size. If you are not a widow, I will know. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. You give me some widow, I say I don't want. Because you are not a widow. Praise God. The widow, the, you know, when the word widow in the Bible is also to typify a very poor person. A person that is very, very poor. Because um, as you see in so many society, when the husband dies, the woman has nothing. Because some husband up to today, even who say they are Christians, when they are writing anywhere, they are asking for a uh, nest of kin, they will not put their wife. They are bad husband. What do I call them? Bad yeah. Praise God. Your nest of kin should not be your firstborn son. Your next of kin should be your wife. But because the foundation is bad between the, them, alright? And if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? Because the man does not trust the woman. That the woman can leave me tomorrow to go and marry another person. Or he believes that the woman can even poison me and kill me. Praise God. That's why some people don't put their wife... Talk less of wife putting their husband. Uh. In fact, the wife's case is the worst. Because women, their children is more important than their husband. May God forgive them. God should forgive them. Is it not true? Their children is number one than the husband. I love you. Uh, darling, I love you. It's a lie. He loved the son more than the man. But that is not right. One plus one is equal to one. The two becoming one. That is the gospel. So whatever makes you and uh, you know so, so when so in the land of Israel it used to happen in those days before Jesus began to change all these teachings about marriage. Hallelujah. 
So that the widows, when they when the husband died, they are wretched. And that's why you don't seek help from a widow. You are to give to the widow. So it was a strengthening to Elijah. When God told, God told Elijah, go to Sarifat. I have prepared a widow there to sustain you. A widow to sustain a prophet. If anybody hear that story, they will say he's a bad prophet. That is not a true prophet. Ah, you are taken from a widow. But you see, God does his own things. Whether somebody is a widow, whether whosoever you are, if you are a true follower of Jesus. Because that's why I'm going to conclude my message this morning. When he say, follow me, he's there to follow him is to be able to key into his lifestyle and to key into the blessings of the Lord. Amen. There is nothing you are looking for that is not in Jesus. The lifting is in Jesus. The prosperity is in Jesus. When you follow Jesus, he satisfies you with good things. He blesses you. He blesses your home. He takes care of you. If you follow him, he said, take my yoke upon you. And do what? And learn from me. For I am lowly and what? I'm lowly in what? I'm meek. Thank you. I'm meek. I will give you rest for your soul. Can you see now? If we follow him, there is a rest. When he say, follow me, I will make you. I will make you. Fishers of men, I will make you. Praise God. I say praise the Lord. When he said, I will make you fishers of men, it's because those people, they were fishers. Supposing they were bankers. If you follow me, I will make you what? Bankers of men. If they are baker, follow me, I will make you what? Baker of men. I will make you caterer of men. Amen? Here yeah, does it. If you say, follow me, I will make you teachers of men. Whatever you are because by the time which means